Welcome back to Let's Play Control. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, <laughs> I've just finished up a whole bunch of paperwork regarding all the stuff that happened in the Foundation. <laughs> I guess being the director isn't all uh, saving the world and looking cool. Are these rocks here before? Although I did want to say, I didn't notice previously that the director has a pyramid uh, paperweight, and I find that very funny. But yes! We've come back to Central Executive in order to get started. Doctor closes the his dimension, and she expects a pat on the back? We're still in lockdown, for Christ's sake! I told you that guy was an asshole. Yes, we need to begin the investigation into the A the, uh, the Bright Falls AWE. Amen to that, brother. Oh yes, and also because uh, I have 14 ability points to uh, invest. We are going into this DLC armed for bear. Uh, yeah, okay, sure, let me see here. All right. Launch large enemies when their health is low. That almost feels like cheating, but yes. Do so now! Launch enemies too. Achieve and unlocked a strong foundation. Complete all missions in the foundation. Why did I just get that? Oh, well, that does make me feel better. Uh, multi-launch! Hold and launch up to three objects. Energy now recovers while holding launch objects. Oh, yeah. Booyah! Let's see, four points. Okay, yeah. One more disparate ability. The shield rush, since I keep hearing about this on the loading screens. While holding shield, use evade to rush at enemies and knock them back requires the evade ability. You know that I've just I've, it's occurred to me for the first time that phrase suggests that uh it's possible to get the shield ability before the evade ability. Huh. Oh well, shield rush. Oh yes. And I can't demonstrate those this very second, but you know. Look at that. I feel good about that. Oh yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, we're going down the elevator, because that's how you get there. What? It doesn't have a mark on it. Why does this have a mark on it? Huh. Found footage. Jesse enters a, dar a dark pit in the cave system, where she finds an altered item on the loose. Jesse uses the light of the altered item to escape the caves, after which she secures the item in a mobile containment unit. I guess that does explain it. Like, that was just where they put it. I guess the astral copies and the astral mimics and the astral spikes must have just found it. Oh yes, the real reason I went to the menu just now. Uh, sorry. Collectibles, yes. Multimedia. Down at the bottom, I believe. Uh, no ash tapes are there. Fuck. Oh no, it was Hotline! Hotline, yes. Because uh, Alan reached out to us through the Hotline. He's not dead, but, uh... <laughs> given the things I have seen him do, I am not at all surprised to discover that Alan's narration can transcend such boundaries. Uh, yes. The, when the DLC became available, this played when we were uh, approaching... The, the, the next time we approached an elevator. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Capital D, Faden capital was sensitive D. to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The four 
force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle, trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else too, a hunger in the dark, not unlike the hostile resonance. Just like stronger she knew that and more intelligent. Can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. So we're clear. Uh, Alan is voiced by... Uh the same actor who played and portrayed uh, Dr. Darling, but uh, he's visually represented. So I guess they pro that, that live action bit there, they probably just went out and got the actual uh, actor. Yeah, a Finnish actor named Ilka Vili. Uh, just a moment. Okay. The thing that jumped out at me most there was she was the perfect receiver. It was like she was made for this. Which makes me feel like Alan was just sweeping some kind of sense across the world looking for a person who could even hear the call to come save him from the dark place. At least I assume that's what this is leading to. Hold on to your butts, Burning Dog fans. I don't know what this is going to be like. I'm actually kind of nervous. It's almost like uh, <laughs> seeing a friend you haven't seen in a decade. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Right. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how recently I've mentioned it, but just so we're clear, Alan Wake is a horror game. This might actually be scary. Okay, and then L and L. Then, okay, that's actually a lot more coherent than I was expecting. A separate button press Hello? is a, a nice touch. Anyone here? I guess not. You say that like that's unusual for today. Or this week, or whatever the fuck it is. Lore! Missing agents. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. Missing agents in... Missing agents, here it is. Uh, no, no description. It was in 2017, though. Mr. Kirkland, here are the latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor, researcher Ezra Cruz, Agent Carolyn Dempsey, Agent Lindsay Malcolm, Agent Charles Murray, Agent Derek Shaw. Letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Uh, also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations are not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the fire break. They're lost, I'm afraid. Behind the fire break? Ooh. Uh, official findings report by read Dr. Casper Darling, compiled by Tim Spalder, special agent by order of William Kirkland, head of investigations. That's a new name. For authorization from Mr. Kirkland, uh, internal investigation D-084-5 was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. 
Despite the amounts of an uh, uh, sorry, the accounts of anonymous redacted regarding inhumane treatment of a redacted currently housed in the bureau is that uh, Hedron. Our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of redacted sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such redacted contained there. One redacted confirmed the redacted's code name to be redacted, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators are similarly blocked from entering the redacted research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated with a lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant human treatment. While this uh, investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into redacted research. Refer to file 9-82-0136 for full report. Well, that's ominous as shit. Casey inquiry. Uh, to, R D uh, to R. Denis from D. Gleason. Subject, possible lead on the Wake case. Oh, here we fucking go. Mr. Denis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the, dis on the disappearance of the author Alan Wake. Per the in Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. Huh. But I'm waiting to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into. What's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance in this guy. Special Investigator Gleason. Alex Casey's alive? I don't know if it counts as a spoiler or not, but Alan explicitly killed uh, Alex Casey off at the end of his last novel. He was bored of detective novels and wanted to try something new. So he killed the dude off to force himself to try something new. Tractor Supplement. Burrow Tractor, AI82-KE. Acquisition date, April 21st, 2019. Scene, not acquired. Containment location, not applicable. What? Miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Uh, Burrow William, male Caucasian. Okay, summary, 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Uh, remains obtained for coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Autopsy findings, blunt force lacerations. Uh, sorry, blunt force injuries, head. A, lacerations to the left ear and cheek. Blunt force injuries... To the extremities. Dislocation of the right knee. Complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated uh, fracture of the proximal right humerus. I'm not quite clear of that. I think it means his arm was torn off. Extensive trauma throughout the abdominal region. Complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from scene. Conclusion. It is my opinion that Mr. Burroughs' death is not the result of a mechanical attack. A mechanical accident, as claimed by authorities, the removal of org organs is consistent with animal attack. Fuck. Resignation letter. Uh, sometime in 2019. To whom it may concern, it is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of investigations to the Federal Bureau of Control. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's redacted. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears and so must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our redacted, who has routinely ignored my requests for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the redacted loose inside. I will never forget the screams of brave agents begging for us to open that firebreak. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The, re the director has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Those stupid motherfuckers have the taken here. 
And they got out. Because of course they got out. They're not bound by the laws of physics any more than the Hiss are. This is a fucking barricade. That's why everything is all randomly thrown around. It's... Oh, fuck. My bad. That's an astronaut helmet. They didn't write the fucking date on it. Trench official warning. Kirkland, I am growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen in investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Yeah, he was pretty far under the Hiss's sway by that point, I think. Director, investigation. Compiled by Redacted. Yeah, I would do that too. By order of William Kirkland, head of investigations. Official findings report re-redacted. Internal confidential. And per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Redacted uh, was launched into the Redacted... Oh, an investigation was launched into the something of Director Zachariah Trench. A recent tra change in behavior witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive Redacted when Redacted with other staff, has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable Redacted between Dr. Trench, uh, Director Trench sorry, and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff. Although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the Dimensional Research Wing and the Redacted kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director uh, Trench's Redacted as anything more than interpersonal agreement disagreements. Hmm. This investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behavior is not indicative of any Redacted and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Refer to file redacted for full report. So that file earlier was talking about uh, Hedron instead of the hit, instead of the Taken, and uh... oh my good god! He sent a letter complaining about the guy keeping Hedron in containment while keeping the motherfucking Dark locked in a box. Underhill background, compatible a agent Lisa Keenum, external investigator, by order of William Kirkland, head of investigations. Official findings report read Dr. Raya Underhill. I don't know why I kept thinking her name was Nora. My bad about that. Uh, let me see. Dr. Raya Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany explains a lot. Dr. Underhill once worked at the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal... Paracriminal organizations are even a thing? That's awesome! I mean, it's terrifying, but that's awesome! Uh, or any record of breaching her NDA since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling. It appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. That's why she was quiet when Jesse asked about what she thinks about Darling ascending to a higher plane of existence and whether he's alive or not. She was in love with the guy. Now I feel bad. 
Uh, this investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. Refer to file 7-08-5286 for full report. Lumberly lumps, holiday humps. Oh! Again, don't mind that. Oh, there is a door there. Wait, wait, wasn't there a door? Like a second ago? So much lore! Cauldron Lake update. Federal Bureau of Control. To Chief Investigator Denis, it happened again. Third time this year. Sunning certainly has it out for our uh, redacted. Could be raccoons. The locals certainly complain about them enough. Why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? It doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Cauldron Lake if they won't let me see any data? Hell, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigations agents. It's only a matter of time before this redacted hits again, and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in ra some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. I very much don't like the suggestion that something was already active before this story started. Staffing issue. Mr. Denis, so yes, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff! <laughs> if you expect us to direct, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing, and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. Oh. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sitting on your desk. The people are getting re re restless, and as agents... Uh, and as... Fuck uh, eyes dropped at the bottom there. The people are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim replacement, it is your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent Grayson. Hmm. Wait, what? Oh, I accidentally switched to unread, so it just showed me the one I'd been looking at. Hmm. It's not working. Probably a loose power core somewhere. Well, that one's visibly fine. Wait, is there another uh, generator over there? Is that the trick? I just need to move it from one to the other? No. Oh, that's not a box, it's just metal. Sorry! one way to make an entrance. Uh, literally, in this case. So I'm going to read this, since the timer is just gone, and we will call it there. Keystone inspection. Will this one be horrifying? Who knows? Mr. Kirkland, we stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Grumman Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it is possible they've switched teams, like you, su uh, like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. <clears throat> An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just the adults, if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If it was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town, and the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. It's the symbol from the motel! One of the other doors had that on it. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. 
In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off and maybe get the comms guy working on a cover story. Sincerely, Agent Keenum. I think I took screenshots of all the doors in the hotel. Give me a moment. Yep. Looks like I went there on Friday the 13th. And yes, that is definitely a pair of circles with a dot in the shared space in the middle. I wonder if that one is, uh... Gonna be, I wonder how relevant that is going to be, is what I mean to say. It's obviously going to be relevant since they brought it up, but... Oh boy. Okay, with that in mind, then... I don't know what that means, but, uh... I guess we're gonna find out as we keep pressing further into this DLC. Yes, yes! I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play AWE, the DLC chapter for Control. You know, we haven't actually encountered the dark yet, but I'm reminded that I used to say a thing instead of later during the Alan Wake videos. And just in case, it might be a good idea to start handing out that advice again. So, uh, until next time, Burning Dog fans, stay in the light. <laughs>